Hello everybody, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino. A little while ago, I was contacted by a lady by the name of Jan Whitaker. She's a fellow colorist, one of us, who loves particularly to use watercolor pencils. And this is a medium that was introduced to her by her daughter some years ago. Sadly, her daughter passed away, but in her memory, Jan decided to release a line of watercolor pencils named for her daughter. So these are the 72 set of watercolor pencils from Anna Velassi. Jan contacted me and asked me if I would take a look at them and review them and show them all to you. So she sent me this package some time ago and I'm sorry Jan, it's a little bit, it's been a few weeks since I got them but I finally got around to actually filming this review for you. I've been enjoying them immensely and now I will tell you all about them. First off, I'll open this very lovely box that they came in. So you can see these came very well protected. Flip that open and inside we've got a tin. There we are, I'll put that to one side. And the tin opens up very easily and it has a hinge on the end so you don't lose the lid. So you flip that open and you've got three of these trays, they're plastic trays of the watercolour pencils. One, two, and three. Let's see if I can get them all in frame. Ah, there we go. Turn that one around and you can see. The top row we have a lot of the uh, warm colours here um, going into some purples. The middle row we have mainly the greens and blues with some more purples. And the bottom row, still more, a couple more purples and all of the desaturated browns and greys and the black. There's a very nice selection of colours here. I'll just take one out that I haven't sharpened yet. Whoops. They are a big, thick pencil, so nice and comfortable to use on your hand. They are a musk, sort of a musky coloured paintwork, base of the pencil as well. The print is, uh, it's a bit hard to see I think, but the print is actually in silver. It might not pick up very well on camera, but it's, I must admit, this is one of the easiest prints that I have seen on any pencil, on anybody who's been struggling to try and read the polychromous prints with the gold and flicking around to the light like I do to see what colour it is. This is much easier with this silver and it actually stands out quite well against the musky coloured paint. Each pencil has a colour name on it. This one for example is pine green and a colour number. And the set also comes with this two little sheets of paper to do your swatches with and these have been pre-printed with the names of the colours and the numbers which is really handy. The one drawback is that unfortunately it is printer paper which means that you're not seeing the colours to the best advantage because it's not a watercolour paper. So if, if you do get this set, my advice to you, if you have uh, the facilities to do so, is to photocopy this onto watercolour paper and then swatch your pencils out onto it. Now I've swatched all these pencils out and they I can tell you right now after working with them in a colouring book they're not as bright on this printer paper as they really are when you put them on good quality paper. But all the same looking at these you can get an idea of the type of colors that are available. You've got a nice range of yellows here. You've got some very nice flesh tones for people who like to paint the lighter color skins or you've got the darker browns here and some of them will be useful for the, the skin tones of darker colored skin. You've got a huge selection of very nice bright pinks and a nice selection of purples. There's an, a selection of greens as well. There's uh, not so many desaturated greens, you've really only got the olive green and the cedar green here so if you want more of a, a muted desaturated green you're going to have to mix it a little bit by combining two of the pencils, layering two colours of pencils down and then activating them. Beautiful selection of browns, I'm very happy with the selection of browns. And, um, and then you've got a nice line up of different types of grey, not just the different tonal values of grey 
but actually different shades of grey as well. So you've got sort of like the more warmer greys and the cooler greys and the bluer greys, which is great because I like to have a variety of greys as well. I do use grey in my colouring. Okay, so that's that. Now I can show you how these perform. Oops, sorry about the noise. On proper watercolour paper, we'll give that a go. Now I've got two types of watercolour paper here. We'll start off with the uh, cold press. This is a little El Dorado pad. It's just a locally marketed watercolour paper at Ride Art stores and not terribly expensive. As you can see, I've done a few little swatches already with this stuff to experiment with these pencils. I'll grab out a couple that I haven't used. What's that one? This is a royal blue and it looks like a really nice aquamarine. So we'll put some of that down. You can see it's the, the rough cold press surface of this watercolour paper because there's a lot of white showing because there's a hell of a lot of very heavy tooth in this paper. So I'll put down a little thick little layer like that. That's, what's this one? This is sky blue which looks like it's a, um, a lighter version of the ultramarine here which was called royal blue that underneath there. Now we'll get a little bit of water. Now you can use with watercolour pencils, you can use your traditional paint brushes. This is the Princeton Neptune which is the paint brushes that I'm presently favouring. Or you can just go for your um, aqua brushes which have the uh, reservoir of water in the handle. And these are the favourite ones that I use. This is the Kuretake ones. But I'll use the traditional ones for now because I feel I can control the water better. I can dab off what I don't want and I don't get extra water where I don't want it. Both are fine. And I'll dissolve that. Now I find these pencils don't dissolve a hundred percent and if you're using the um, Faber Castell Albrecht Dura, Dura pencils, pardon me, um, they dissolve 100% no matter what you put them on. I find it's a little hit and miss with these pencils. Some of them dissolve completely and some of them you can see there's a little bit of a, a pencil mark left behind. There we go. And if I scrub it out a little bit you can see there's still a little bit of pencil mark left behind with that um, little sky blue. This royal blue, still a little bit. It's 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 very faint. It's not enough to bother me at all. Okay, we'll try it now on the smooth press watercolor paper. Oops, sorry, I had to disappear for a second because I was looking for some smooth press uh, watercolor paper that I can use. This is Draw and Wash by Art Spectrum, which is available in Australia. It is an Australian-made watercolor paper. So I'll try these out on this book just to see how they go on a smoother surface. So let's pick a nice red. Okay, make a little swatch. This paper, Art Spectrum, what did I call it? Draw and wash paper. This feels very much like your typical colouring book paper that you would get in a good colouring book. So I'm hoping we get a good result here. There we go. You can see there's a lot of colour in these pencils. They're quite nice and deep and rich. And this time we might use a water brush pen. One of my aqua brushes. Oh look at that, that's dissolving nicely. No, oh, that was no problem at all. I think there's just a oh, very faint imprint of maybe one or two of those strokes there that I used to actually lay the pencil down with, but um, other than that, that looks pretty good. Now, of course I've, oh no there is, I thought I'd misplaced my little piece of kitchen towel. I always, whenever I'm using watercolours or watercolour pencils, I always have a bit of kitchen towel handy to dab off. Oh yeah, look at that, that's nice. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? It's 
great for flowers that color there beautiful no very nice these work very well on this paper which as I said is very similar to the feel of good quality books for coloring such as the Joanna Basford books or the Millie Marotta books or the Kirby Roseanne books okay let's pull out something that I have colored in to show you so now I want to show you a completed piece that I've colored in Die Welt under de Lupe Zuvasa, one of the books by Rita Berman, and I colored in, let's see, ah, they turned out nice and bright. So they're really good colors, and on this paper, the pencils dissolved completely. So I had very, very little in the way of pencil marks left behind when I used it. And this picture has been colored in completely using the uh, Anna Valassi pencils with my usual going crazy with a um, white gel pen afterwards. All right. That I'm very happy with these pencils and I will happily be using them again in future. So there you have my review on the Anna Valassi 72 set of watercolor pencils. Now I should mention that these watercolor pencils are very budget friendly. They're currently retailing on Amazon US for $44.87. So if you don't want to fork out for the Albrecht Durers but you're in the market for a nice set of watercolor pencils, I can certainly recommend these. And I will leave the link below in the description. So I hope you've had fun watching my review and I hope you are currently having fun on any other colouring adventure that you are currently on. And until I see you next time, happy colouring. I hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on. And until next time, happy colouring.